and welcome to this tutorial in which we're going to look at a fairly simple way of creating a clickable user interface for VR. Now if you find any part of this tutorial useful please remember to like, subscribe, positive comment below and feel free to leave any suggestions for future content. Okay, um, if you've not watched any of my previous videos on how to set all this up let's have a quick look at the process. So this is the thing I always generally go through which is I create a 3D core project um, I've made sure I've added the Meta XR all-in-one to my assets. Um, I can go to Package Manager, I can then look on my assets, click on it, um, and then install. And then we can go to our Android settings. We can then go to XR Plugin Management, make sure we tick on the Oculus. Uh, make sure we go to the Android itself and tick on Oculus as well. Um, then we can go into our player settings. I've always set mine to Android 10, anything. I'm not sure whereabouts it stops working. For some of the early versions it just doesn't run and then I go into the oculus as well and you'd see there's a bunch of errors and I'm just saying sort of fix all although I tend to just press fix then apply all because sometimes it glitches out if you try to do too many in one go um, okay and that brings us to our main unity scene where I've dragged the OVR camera rig from our prefab setting so that's basically a quick speed run version if you've not watched the previous videos okay so I've got my OVR camera rig as mentioned um, and what I've just done is I've added two planes. One to act as a, back, uh, as a floor, one to act as a background. You don't need these, it's just my way of setting something in scene. Now a few months ago you could just pop down into the XR um, libraries or into the, I think it was in the Oculus Core libraries and there was uh, in the prefabs <clears throat> there was something called UI helpers. Made things really easy. They seem to have removed them. They've actually moved them over to these starter samples which means you have to download and install um, a huge amount of prefabs and like well, basically the starter samples. So to try and make things a little bit easier, what I've done is I've just dragged the UI helper package and I've dumped it onto my GitHub. I'll put a link down below so you can just download this. There must be up to something new where there'll be a newer version, something better, but so far I've not found a quicker, easy way of making it work. So if I just go into my assets folder, um, I've already downloaded, well, I've copied from another project, I'm just going to drag it in. It's going to ask me to import the UI helper along with laser pointers. Um, yep, that's fine. Press import. And this will just give us some code to make it a little bit easier. Uh, like I said, this was originally a standard asset. It's just They just seem to have removed it for now. Okay, so we're going to go on to our camera rig and I'm going to just minimize these for the moment. Uh, I've already it's mine for Quest 3, I've already made sure, I've not. We start on floor level, so it'll go a bit mad in a minute. I'm just going to add component, and I'm going to add a OVR physics, physics raycaster. Um, I don't think I need to do anything with this. Nope, that's fine. I'm then going to grab the UI helper that we just brought into this. So I'm just going to go on to this, I'm just going to type in UI helper, well UIH because it's going to show us where it is, which is in the Oculus sample framework. So we could just find it by going through Oculus and, and so on, but I'm just going to drag it straight onto our scene. Um, and what's our next step? I'm going to just expand this, click on laser pointer and say enable the line renderer. So, so we can see our little laser pointer pointing. I'm now going to click onto our event system and it wants um, a... Where's the ray transform coming from? Just look down. What we want is, is where is the ray coming from? Now I want to, because I'm right handed, I want it to come from the right hand. So I'm just going to open up the tracking space, open up left and right. I've not had the controllers yet, so I am just going to quickly add those uh, by clicking on my, oh, where's it gone to? There we go, prefabs. I'm going to drag a controller prefab onto the left hand, a controller prefab onto the right hand. Left hand, I'm now going to choose a left touch, right hand, oh not that one, right hand, right hand, I'm going to choose the right hand. So we'll be able to see the controllers on screen, assuming, yep there they are, so we can see where they're coming from, and we can already see there's a bit of a laser pointer happening, but at the moment that's just there because it's in the zero zero coordinates, so it's not really attached to the hand yet. If I click on, click on event system, I'm just going to drag my uh, controller prefab onto my transform, now what I need is a canvas for it to click on. Uh, I could at this point, if I wanted to load this program up and you'd be able to see the laser pointer, it should in theory be pointing out from your controller. But I'm just going to compact this for them. I'll leave that there. I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a canvas. 
So if I just click on UI, I've gone blind. There we go, UI canvas. Let's just come bring out so I can see the whole thing now. This canvas is currently set to overlay, um, so it's obviously too big for us to see. So what I'm going to do, well, I'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to click on my text, so I can put our kind of our menu into this. So whatever the game's going to be called, so I'm just going to call it VR game. Uh, I'm going to add a new text box. I'm sorry, not a new text box. I'm going to add a button. Now, if this is your first time of pressing it, it will ask you to import the Text Mesh Pro library. I always say yes but I don't install the, the samples that come up. So now I've got the button. Um, and this is where I can just change the text in it by expanding, which of course is going to be sort of play. Um, I can add another button, so I'm just going to duplicate this one. Control D to duplicate. Uh, now these are not named very well. Again, I would urge you to name these sensibly. So it makes things easier to find. Let's come down there. So settings, and then I'm just going to have a quick button. Okay, so they're all in the same place, which is what not good. So I'm just going to grab the second button, move that down a little bit, grab the last button, move that down a little bit. So now we've got our menu. Now why have we lost our game? Ah, oh, I renamed the button, didn't I? I didn't actually change the text though. So if I just put VR game, that's one where you don't look up. Okay, so Oh, that'll do. I've sort of messed up by making these children objects of the title. Um, there we go. We've now got a very poor quality menu, but this is massive. Um, you can see the size of our of our player. If I sort of zoom down to our camera and look up, you know, our, our canvas is is massive. That's not what we want. So I'm going to click on canvas. I'm going to come up to screen space overlay, change this to world space. Um, I'm going to put this to zero zero coordinates. Uh, but now I'm going to scale this. If I just tick this little box button here, and I'm just going to change this to 0 0.01. Uh, zoom back in. There we go. We've now sort of got our menu. It's just below the ground level, so I'm going to pull this up. Right now the camera is also on ground level, uh, but if I start to just pull this back, it should kind of appear. So there we go. It's going up against kind of our wall, and this may take some trial and error to get it just the right size. That still may look too big when you put the VR headset on. Okay, so we've now got our menu itself. Uh, canvas, it says, well, what's our event camera? Well, we need to tell it which camera we're using. Now, we're not going to use this camera because that's not our VR camera. In fact, I'm going to delete it. What we are going to use is the camera hooked up to our VR settings. So I'll back down to Canvas, drag this camera over. Um, I'm also going to add a OVR Raycaster. So this is also still on the canvas. Um, Will that do for now? I think that should actually make it work. Okay, so what this is going to do is this now knows where the camera's looking at it. We've got our UI helper that's actually going to physically cause a trigger event. Um, now, if you've never done a canvas before, these are quite easy to work with. I'm going to click on my button um, and make it load our next level. Now, if I go into my scenes menu, sorry, my scenes folder, I've already got a level one scene, the sample scene that I'm working on. So the default you've seen, and I've also created a, a, a scene, sorry, a settings scene. So if I click on my play button, no, that's on the play. If I click on my play button, so I should have really named them. So I'll rename it now. Makes it easier to see. Come over to this side. Uh, this is empty on an event. We want to do something. We want to physically. I press play. What's it going to do? Well, we've not got anything just yet. So in my assets, I'm just going to right click create a new script uh, called menu handler, yeah that'll do. Okay, so now up in, uh, in, in Visual Studio I've got the menu handler, I'm just going to involve, include a new library, not spelled like that I'm not, using unity engine manager. Uh, now I, I can get rid of these, I'm not going to use them, um, I'm just going to put void Oops, void load level. And um, this, oh, I need to make this public, otherwise it can't access it. So, public void load level. Now, this is where I want it to load a level depending on what I've clicked on. So, I could do a bunch of if statements like if I press play, then do this, if I press, you know, and so on. I could do a, a function called load play, load settings, load. But what I'm going to do is make it receive a string instead called level name or scene name. It's up to you, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to go. Scene manager dot load level sorry load scene 
throwback from a very old version of Unity there, load scene, level name. So now I can reuse this one tiny little function in loads of different uh, scenes or environments without having to recompile the sketch, um, without recompiling the script. So if I press save, I'm going to jump back into Unity. Okay, so it's compiled that. I'm just going to create a new empty. You don't need to do this, you can put it to anything you want. Now I'm going to call this menu. Uh, I'm going to drag the menu script onto that. So now we can see it's got the script for menu handler. Now, if I come back onto my button, so wherever my button's gone to, canvas, play button, come down here, I'm going to drag. Now it's important that I drag the um, the actual menu empty, not the script. So I drag the menu empty across, no function, menu handler, uh, where has it gone to, load level, and now it wants the name of it. So if I just go back onto my scenes, I want to load level one. So I can just type in level one. Oop. Again, it's really important that you get the grammar correct as well as the spelling. Um, I could now go to my next button and I could say click empty, same again. So really it would have been wise for me to have actually duplicated the buttons after I'd done these steps. We've just saved a few seconds of work, I suppose. Settings, okay. Now, there's one last thing I've got to do before testing this, which is, I need to go onto my file, build settings. Right now there are no scenes. So I've got to add my open scene. I really shouldn't call it sample scene. I should call this like menu or something, but I'll leave it like that for now. Um, I can close this down. I'm now going to open my other scene, so level one. Uh, yep, I've some save changes, of course. So here's a very crude level that will become a game eventually. Um, file, build settings, add open scene. Yep, I can close it down. Go onto my settings menu. So I just created a very simple canvas. It's the exact same thing, by the way. I've just used some text boxes and some buttons. And I'll slowly build this up as I need to. So again, build settings, add open scene. If you do not add these, these items, then the clicky buttons won't work. It just will not load for you. It also, it's important that whatever is the first one ticked, that is the first one that Unity will, that's what Unity will create as your first level. So it doesn't matter what order they're in, really, as long as that's the first one. But I tell that back, it does matter. If I added a scene that I didn't want to use and it was above it, as long as it was unticked, it wouldn't matter. Um, so that is obviously my menu. I should really rename it. So I might go and do that now because it's, otherwise it's going to bug me. Simple save as menu, into scenes, save. So notice it's still got sample scene. So I'm going to go into my build settings. Uh, I'm going to add the current scene, so now it's there, and we'll drag this to the top, well above level one anyway, and then just untick, so it knows menu is my first one, so notice it is numbered, zero, one, two, okay, stop blathering on. So now I should be able to compile this, um, so I'll just press pause while I go and grab my quest, because it's not plugged in. Okay, so I'm going to go onto my file, build settings, yep, I'm on Android, I'm on Android, player settings, uh, I'm going to go over to player, yep, I've got my name's set, I could set icons and things but I won't for now. And I'm just going to say build and run. Um, I'm just, I always like to create a folder called dist for distribution. I like to put my APKs in there so now I can just put this sort of menu, menu test. Uh, save. Now the first time we press the build it usually takes quite a while so I'll press pause for now. Okay so here we are in the quest we can see I've got the laser pointer coming out um, and we can see if I hold my pointer of the player, we can see it graying out slightly. So if I press the play button, there we go, we're into my level one. Obviously I'm a bit close to the ground because I don't think I've set the, the, the height correct for my headset, but we can see it's loaded up. Okay, so I said that took quite a while, but you just saw the fact that it was loading up the menu. Um, sorry, it was going from the menu to level one. Obviously it wasn't going to the others, but I could easily fix that now. You know, I can click on, on the canvas, expand these a little bit make sure I open up each of the buttons. So that was my settings. Oops, get to improve my typing speed and ability. So if I click on the settings, same again. I think, did I already set that one? Yep, I got settings. Click on the, the other one, which was quit. Now quit would be a little bit different. Um, if I just go back into my code, I can just go public void uh, quit game. At this point, I think I can just write application dot. No, not quit. That's a way to intercept it. In 
dot quit there we go so that will now shut our game down so I can blitz back into into unity but again um, you now know how to do a VR UI menu uh, when I do see what the newer method is I will be sure to share that with you but for now obviously go and edit in your games play about with these different button menus and again please like please subscribe positive comment below share this video with friends um, and then always potentially let me know what you're doing with this information and I shall see you in the next video Oops, I got a bit carried away with ending the video, didn't I? On the quit button, what I need to do is come down here, add a new uh, a new click event, drag that over, menu handler, but this time just press quit game. And now when I press the quit, it should quit it down. And I should also now jump over into my settings menu, uh, save changes, yes of course, um, click on the menu button itself, so canvas, again I've not named any of these, but there's the menu, and I can do the same again. I can come down here, uh, on click, um, I should obviously have not had the menu handler, but now I should, in fact, go on, let's just very quickly do it. Even though this video has gone on long enough already, uh, I'm going to create that again. Menu, drag the script over to it, so it's the same script, which is the reason why I do it this way. Um, I can now click back on that button, or oh, didn't scroll down already. There we go, I can drag that menu over, uh, and again, just like I did before, I can go load level. And this time I can just say load menu level. And that's it, that should let me go jump in between the things that I need. Obviously, plus and minus, you do a couple of other events. Okay, should see you in the next one. The player, we can see it graying out slightly. So if I press the play button, there we go, we're into my level one. Obviously, I'm a bit close to the ground because I don't think I've set.